what? Daddy did it. Good morning. Scripture reading today in God's Word is John 15, 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does not bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. <clears throat> no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. You <clears throat> if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciple. So be it. I said, don't you wish you had the energy of that little girl running around? Willow. And then I said, don't you wish you could hear her too? So. He's going this next week or next month to get new hearing aids. Hopefully they'll be a little better. <laughs> you behind him can't see the look on his face. He's like... Let's start with prayer. Father in heaven, we do thank you for the joy that you have brought us, the peace that you have given us in all circumstances, Father. To know that we have an advocate in heaven that has faced everything that we could possibly face here on earth. That he did, gave up heaven and gave up his life to save us. And Lord, not only that, but Jesus is the word. He is the words of life. He is the way, the truth, and the life unto, unto the Father. And Lord, may we fix our eyes on Jesus. May we learn from Him. May we be firmly grafted in to Jesus so that we produce fruit, that we bring glory and honor to You. Open our eyes, open our ears and our hearts to hear Your Word. Sanctify us by Your truth and Your Spirit. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I entitled this Kingdom Living 101. <clears throat> and if you're not familiar with that, if you took classes back in college or in school, you might have had 101. That's kind of like the, the introduction. And this would be like your basics to the kingdom of heaven. Because if you read this week following the pattern that I'm reading, you read Matthew chapter 11, 12, 13, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Get that out there. And if you didn't pay attention, it was a reoccurring theme there of kingdom of heaven. Okay? Jesus is trying to teach those who are willing to hear and obey. That goes all the way back to the Old Testament. That if you hear, you're not really hearing if you're not really obeying. It doesn't mean anything to you. And he's teaching those who want to be a part of the kingdom of heaven how to live like they are part of the kingdom of heaven. So I'm going to start in Matthew chapter 11, verse 13, if you want to turn there. And I'll give Merle a second. He says, I don't give him enough time. And then when I get to Matthew chapter 13, you can just kind of hang out there because I'm going to go fast till I get there. And guess what? We're still going to be in Acts chapter 8 also because we've got to see what happens with Philip. <clears throat> but in Matthew chapter 11, verse 13, Jesus said, For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. They foretold of something coming the one, the anointed one that would save their people from their sins, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Lamb of God. It all, everything up to that point points to Jesus. So wouldn't we want to concentrate on what Jesus said and did? Wouldn't we want to concentrate and fix our eyes on Jesus till the next thing when Jesus returns? 
And there is no doubt whatsoever you can put all of your faith, all of your hope, all of your trust on that. Because what God says will happen will happen. It might not happen exactly as you expect it to or in your time frame or anything else, but it will happen. If you put your faith in Jesus Christ, He did come, He did exactly what He was supposed to do, He will come again and He will claim you as His own. But there's a problem. There's weeds and then there's real fruit-bearing plants. And there's not anything else. It's black or white. It's not gray. But so many times we want to look at it as, as it's gray. We want to look at it and compare ourselves to someone else. Or we want to say, well, it's okay if I go ahead and, and sin. I know I'm not supposed to, but I'm covered by the blood. We're supposed to live holy, righteous, set-apart lives. Not with our own agenda, but with God's agenda. With the compassion and love for others that we are willing to die for their salvation. We're supposed to produce fruit. And by our fruit we will be known. <clears throat> Verse 19 and 20, The Son of Man came eating and drinking, not what people would expect. And they say, Look at this glutton and drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is vindicated by her actions. If you say you believe in Jesus Christ, if you say you're a Christian, are you bearing fruit? That should be your actions. Verse 25 to 30, at that time, Jesus declared, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and unlearned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was well-pleasing in your sight. All things have been entrusted to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one, no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him." Shouldn't we be focusing on Jesus, learning from Jesus, growing from Jesus, bearing fruit for Jesus until He returns? <clears throat> Verse 28, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Now, here's where we've got to go back and think differently, and that's why I called it Kingdom Living 101. Because when you went into this class, you had this perception that this is how things worked. I need to be good enough. I, whatever it is, I'm, I'm not good enough. There's no way that I ever could be. I don't understand grace. I don't understand loving the, my enemies and everything. What, whatever it is, you have to change that thought process and learn something different. Because Jesus turned this world upside down in the way that we think. By grace, you're saved. By grace, Nothing that you did to deserve it whatsoever. It's unmerited favor. And God continues to give grace upon grace upon grace. Not because of your standing in this life, but because of your standing in eternity. That's why you are blessed. Because your sins have been forgiven because of what Jesus did. The price that He paid for you. And now you know you can't do it on your own, but because of God's power living in you, you can be transformed into the image of Christ. Where John literally writes later, if you sin, you have an advocate. We are to live this new life, getting all of our nourishment from Jesus to produce fruit. Boy, that's got to change a lot of the way of the thinking that, that I have, that I still have. I need to repent, and we talked about repentance. All the time of, of me trying to do it myself or the thought processes I have or anything else. What is so important in my life that hinders me from this fruit production? So Jesus said, come to me. Remember when he said, come and follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He will make you into something that you're not. And you're fishing for men. That's what you care about. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, because you've been trying to do this your way. You continue to fight against what Jesus' basic teachings are. If your enemy slaps you on the face, turn the other cheek to him. What? Basic teachings of Jesus about humility, about suffering, about loving, about compassion, about turning this world upside down because you live like Jesus in this world. If you're weary and burdened, come to Jesus and I will give you rest. Isn't that what you want? 
And Jesus clarifies in just a minute what that rest is. Verse 29, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Take on an instrument, put on to a beast of burden for plowing the field, and let Jesus guide you where you're to work. Don't work building up treasures on earth anymore, but work building up treasures in heaven. We're still supposed to work, but not for the way that we did, not for the things that we did, but for the kingdom of heaven. And the only way you can do that is, is to say, I give up, I'm putting on Jesus' yoke. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And learning is something, the process done every day. So we've got to go into this Kingdom Living 101 every day and see how Jesus lived. Spend time with Him. Spend time in prayer. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It may not seem like it, but it is. When we die to ourselves, it's easier to take up the cross and follow after Jesus. Because dying here on earth means that we enter into an eternity with heaven with Jesus. Is there any comparison? Is anything worth keeping you from working for the kingdom? <clears throat> my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And you will find rest not in this world but rest for your souls. But you know you will find rest and peace and joy in this world. Even when you're persecuted. Let's go to Acts. Let's look at Stephen. I mean, he boldly stood up. He didn't worry about death, anything else. He told the message of Jesus Christ and then said, You stiff-necked hypocrites, repent. Quit resisting the Holy Spirit that is trying to give you rest for your souls. And then as he's being killed, forgive him, Father. Forgive him. Don't count this against him. And then we look at Philip. He is driven from his home and he goes to Samaria, the land that is hated. And he had to know some of this. He didn't necessarily feel this way. But he had to be told, living in Jerusalem, you don't want to go over there. You want to walk around it. You don't want to go to those guys and here's why. We can't stand them, you know. But he didn't fall for that trap. He went and couldn't keep his mouth quiet because of what Jesus Christ had done for him. <clears throat> the invitation is yours. Do you want to be a part of the kingdom of heaven? Then come. Jesus will make you a fisher of men. Take on His yoke. Work for Him. Quit fighting against Him. As we turn to Matthew chapter 12, <clears throat> in verse 30, Jesus says, He who is not with me is against me. Black and white again. There's not a gray there. You're working for one kingdom or the other. You may not realize it. You may think that you're, what you're doing here is insequential, but you're working for one kingdom or the other, one king or the other, because you've pledged your allegiance to one king or the other. Now, I'm not talking here that you're saved or not. I'm talking about your motives on what you're doing. Every time when I want to do what I want to do, and there's a this voice inside of me, the spirit yearning me to do something else, I'll give you an example so you understand it. That person that you are going on your, no offense here, your trip to Hawaii, and there's this need that comes up. And I'm not pointing fingers at all. And there's this tugging in your spirit to stop and do whatever, to help them, to share the God. Maybe that's an opportunity. Maybe not only was it an opportunity, but maybe it was because there was a wreck down the road that you'd missed. You don't know the consequences of all things. But if it's in your heart, look at Philip again, to share the gospel message as you go, in the circumstances you go, you will share Jesus Christ with this world. You will be planting seeds. You may or may not see them come to production but you are planting seeds as you go because of how much you love Jesus. He who, is not, he who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. So if you resist that calling from the Spirit to reach out to that person, oh, we're going to see that with Philip too because the Ethiopian eunuch says, how can I know unless someone stopped and taught me? Okay? 
Look for those opportunities. Be driven by the Spirit. L look for every time that you can profess the hope that is within you, as Peter says later. Therefore, since if you're with Jesus or you're not, and you're gathering or you're scattering, therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Another topic for another day, but Stephen said, quit resisting the Holy Spirit. Okay? We're not going to get in depth what all that means, but have you ever felt like you might have resisted the Holy Spirit because you want to do what you wanted to do versus what you felt like God was tugging you to do? Another example that's not as pointed. Just the neighbor down the road when you see him and you pass in your truck and you say, Ugh. Okay, I won't go any further. <laughs> Make a tree good. If a tree is good, what? Its fruit will be good. Simple, basic 101s. Or make a tree bad, here's the opposite, and its fruit will be bad. That's why we can see where Jesus said, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord. They look like fruit trees, but they're doing it for the wrong reason. They look like fruit trees, but their fruit is bad. It looked good. I mean, how many times have you bought fruit at the grocery store and come home and thrown it away because it wasn't good on the inside? It looked good on the outside. Okay? <clears throat> make a tree good and its fruit will be good, or make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad. Here we go again. For a tree is known by its fruit. Remember that? Okay? Jesus has already talked about it. Fruit. What does my fruit look like? Well, first of all, I've got to be bearing fruit. And second of all, I need to self-examine it. Examine in me, Lord, my heart, my motives, my reason for what I'm doing. And if you remember at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, then Jesus said, Therefore, build your house, because that's going to come back in a minute, on the rock. So that no matter what happens, that foundation will stand and you'll find rest for your soul. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 41, it says, the men, of a, the men of Nineveh will stand at judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they did what? Repented. Remember how I told you about repentance. They repented at the preaching of Jonah. Eight words. <laughs> That's what Jonah did. And he reluctantly did it. He did it for the wrong reasons. But he did go and the message was sown and the people of Nineveh re repented. And they truly repented. It was evident. And now, one greater than Jonah is here. Verse 50. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven, does. Not thinks about it, but does. Hears and obeys. Whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and my sister and my mother. You have fellowship with Jesus. You belong in the kingdom. Jesus will come back and claim you as his brother, as his sister, as his friend. You can count on that. Nothing can take that away from you. Matthew chapter 13. And I said you can stay here because this is where I'm concentrating and where you should go back and review. There's so much here. Twelve times... Jesus mentions the kingdom of heaven. It's implied more than that, but 12 times the word is there. Kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. I'm not going to go 12 times. Kingdom, I'll go four. Get it through your head to what he's talking about, the kingdom of heaven. And it starts out, I'm reading from Barry and Study Bible here, that same day. So it lets you know that this is occurring right in sequence here in Matthew. That same day that he said that about his brother and his mother and his sister, he told them the parable of a sower. And every one of you knows that. Probably the most famous or one of the most famous parables. A further teaching illustration about what. And it's explained here also. A farmer goes out to sow his seed. Jesus Christ came. That's the beginning of the seed sowing. The Word made flesh and dwelled among us. And it's our opportunity to come after Jesus and follow in His footsteps or not. To be with Him or to be against Him. To be gathering or to be scattering. That's the words we've already looked at. And don't forget, a tree is known by its fruit. No other way. 
when you read that parable, you get hung so many times on which ones are saved. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I say this all the time and I'll teach this as long as I have breath to teach it. A little child would tell you only the one that's bearing fruit that produced a crop. If you ask the child about, well, what about the 30, 60, 100? Well, they're producing fruit. There may have been variables right there, but they're producing fruit. The farmer went out to produce a crop, didn't he? Yes. Is he happy that a crop produced? Yes. Is he happy with 30? Yes. Is he happy with 60? Yeah. He wanted a crop produced. Not one that never impacted the soil. Not one that was choked out when persecution, or died out when persecution came along. Or not one that weeds in the desires of this life choked out fruit production. There may have been some. But that's not the life that we're called to live. We're called to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow after Jesus so that we can be fishers of men. Not so that we can produce a crop here and some there. We're called to be committed to the farmer coming out to sow his seed because there will be a gathering, a harvest. <clears throat> Verse 15. Here's the problem. For this people's heart has grown callous. He's talking about his children, the children of Israel. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their ears, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and turn. You think this problem exists in the church today? You'd be a fool to say it doesn't. You think this problem resists, exists today in the lives of individual Christians, including myself. It's a daily battle we fight. And we have got to be nourished and filled every day with Jesus. Every day. <clears throat> Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. Rest for their souls. But blessed because of your right standing are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. And what does that mean you do? You obey and you bear fruit. You might need an example like Philip to come along and show a Peter his hypo hypocrisy. That's why we need each other. But if you're truly saved, if you're truly focused on the kingdom of heaven and of Jesus, you will bear good fruit. Working for the kingdom, working for the king, uh, producing fruit. Then Jesus goes on to explain the parable, and he, he says basically this. There was no entrance to the soil in the first one. There was entrance but no fruit in the second one. The third one, get this, becomes unfruitful. Now, I don't know if that means that they lost their salvation, were never saved, doesn't matter again. Childlike faith. Farmer sowed the seed to grow a crop. The ones that become unfruitful are not good to the farmer. It's not his intent and purpose for the kingdom of heaven, which is at hand. Repent, therefore. <clears throat> and then the various level of fruitfulness. The farmer came to sow his seed to produce a crop. That is why a farmer plants seeds. And when that crop grows, he will harvest. Simple facts. And by their fruit you are known. Weeds a lot of times look good. They look like flowering plants. They look like fruit-bearing plants. It's hard to tell a lot of times. But come harvest time, only the fruit will be harvested. The rest will be thrown into the fire and burned. I told you 12 times Jesus specifically says the kingdom of heaven here. And it's implied more than that. I want to review what we've read so far in Matthew. This is every time that the kingdom of heaven or kingdom is mentioned because there's a 
one in here where, where Satan tries to describe an alter, alternative kingdom. Okay? I'm going to go through here fast, so don't try to turn here. Okay? In Matthew chapter 3, verse 2, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. That's John the Baptist saying that, because he's saying that Jesus has come. He is the last one prophesying. Because after this, that is finished. Now we're looking at the, the period of fruit bearing to harvest. Then Matthew chapter 4, verse 8, we've got this alternative. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. So he could take Jesus and fix his eyes on that. But Jesus didn't let that happen, did he? Matthew 4, 17, Jesus says, From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Exact same words of John the Baptist. We prophesied up to this point. Now Jesus is here and he's saying the same thing. Repent because the kingdom of heaven is near. Matthew 4, 23, Jesus went through Galilee teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people. Now notice here, there's power, Holy Spirit power that comes along with proclaiming the kingdom, these gifts that we see. So if we're not proclaiming the kingdom again, don't expect to see spiritual gifts like this. Okay? Matthew 5, verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit. This is upside-down teaching. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's the first of the Beatitudes. Matthew chapter 5, verse 10, the last of the Beatitudes. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, 19, Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be least in the kingdom of heaven. You might make it. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, verse 20, For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees, those who hear but don't practice, and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not even enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 6, verse 10, This is the Lord's Prayer. Your kingdom come in contrast to mine, right? Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, 13, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Matthew 6, 33, But seek ye first the kingdom, and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Matthew 7, 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Matthew 8, 11, I say to you that many will come from east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 12, But the subjects of the kingdom of heaven will be thrown outside, the ones who should have been there, into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 9, 35, Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. Matthew 10, 7, As you go, proclaiming this message, the kingdom of heaven has come near. That's when he sends the disciples out. Matthew 11, 11, Truly I tell you, among these born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist, yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Matthew eleven twelve. 12, For the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence, and violent people have been raiding it. Matthew 12, 25, Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. Verse 26, If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How can his kingdom stand? Matthew 12, 28, But if it is by the Spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Now we're into Matthew chapter 13. He replied, Because of the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Matthew 13, verse 9, Anyone who hears this, the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away the, the, what was sown in their heart. That's the seed on the path if you didn't get it. Verse 24, Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. Verse 31, he told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field. Verse 33, he told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. 
Verse 38, the field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one. Two scenarios there. They belong to the kingdom or they belong to Satan's kingdom. Verse 41, The Son of Man will send out His angels and they will weed out of His kingdom everything that causes sin and who do evil. Verse 43, Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Verse 44, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all that he had and bought that field. Verse 45, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. Verse 47, Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that has let down into the lake and caught all kind of fish. Verse 52, He said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. Now I know I went through that fast, but did you see that story that that told? There are two kingdoms. The kingdom of Satan, which he is trying to deceive you with, and Jesus did not get deceived. Fix your eyes on him. Follow after his pattern. Let him transform you. And the only way that that's going to happen is you give up everything that's of yourself, the I out of the sin, and replace it with an O, which is the Son. Get that sin gone so that you proclaim Jesus and then the Spirit will give you gifts accordingly. There's, there's not a time when the church doesn't have gifts today. Sorry. We're not seeing the gifts because we're not focused as much. We don't look like that Acts church. My opinion, but I'm going to call it a biblical fact. <laughs> Where is your heart focused? What matters more to you? Would you go sell everything that you have? Do you understand the basics of kingdom living 101? Your life is not your own. It has been purchased with a price. The old self is dead and gone. Behold, all things are new. And we need to do, think about these things. Teach ourselves every single day. This is your invitation to kingdom living. What are you going to do with it? Now back in Matthew 13, 11, Jesus said, Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, Peter, then Philip, then the Ethiopian eunuch, then me, way down that list, okay? Because we have the secrets of the kingdom of heaven... They haven't been given to others. Verse 12 says, Whoever has been given more, he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away from him. Now you can think about, in a sermon for another day, that fruit bearing, why some bore 30, some 60, some 100. Because they let Jesus plow and till more and more and more. Now, there are other factors there too, so I don't want to go far, that far down that trail, but God picks and chooses who He does, but He calls each and every one of us to be a disciple. Some will be the Billy Graham. Some will be the person that led Billy Graham. Some will be the Peter. Some will be the, the Philip that, that initiated Peter along the way. Some will be the Barnabas that led to Paul. doesn't matter. We're all parts of the kingdom. And it doesn't matter. I pray every day that Jacob becomes a more godly man than I ever have been. I hope that's your prayer for your children. I don't know, but I want him to be greater for the kingdom than I ever was. That's, that's my prayer for my child, for my grandchildren. So I've got to be focused on kingdom living. The sowing of the seed is the beginning of this until harvest comes. And there will be weeds, there will be trials, there will be troubles, but you can take heart because of Jesus. You just need to concentrate on living like Jesus, producing fruit. The church is supposed to live like, go back and look at the mustard seed and the leaven. Little bitty seed that grows up to the biggest of the garden variety plants that birds can come. Birds can come and rest in its branches and find food. Or like the little bit of yeast that it took to put into a massive amount of dough to, le to leaven that out. 
It doesn't take much. Jesus said himself, all you need is mustard like, seed like faith. Fix your eyes on Jesus. He's the one that transforms you from the inside out. He's the one that will work a great thing in you and will see it to completion, as Scripture says. The climax comes in verse 37 and 38. The seed is sown and is boiled down to two kinds of plants. Weeds or wheat. That's all that should matter come judgment day is that you produced fruit in accordance to your faith because of what Jesus Christ means to you in your life. Verse 51 closes out that chapter which says, Jesus literally says, have you understood these things? And in verse 52 he says, for this reason every scribe, everyone who has been taught, who has been discipled now in the kingdom of heaven, that's what they've been discipled in, they're like a homeowner. Go back to think of Jesus' last words in the Sermon on the Mount. Build your house on the rock. Here is the homeowner who has done that. And out of his storeroom, he brings out new treasures as well as old. You bring them out so that others can see them. Others can benefit from them. You don't store them up for yourself. You live your life because you want your children and your grandchildren and your friends and your neighbors and even your enemies to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Nothing else should matter more. A life fixed on living for Jesus. Sadly, verse 57 and 58 tell us that Jesus was rejected in His hometown. In His own home, He was rejected the place where he should not have been rejected, the place he should have done many mighty miracles, but he didn't because of their lack of faith. And even mustard seed faith turns into the biggest of the garden variety plants and birds come and find rest and food. So now let's go to Acts chapter 8. But remember, Matthew chapter, 11, verses thir uh, Matthew chapter 13, verses 11, 12, the knowledge of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you. Whoever has been given more, he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away from him. I don't know if Philip heard those words or not. I have no idea. But Philip knew them in his heart. The reason that I told you that I gave the psalm devotion is because let us think back at the church then that if they had any scriptures written down, they had some psalms. They probably didn't have anything else. And we know that Philip probably didn't have much at all because he's not an Israelite. He's a Greek-believing Jew. So he had very little scripture. He got trained up from Peter, took what he had in his heart, and his Holy Spirit revealed that to him so that he could teach others about Jesus. You don't have to have all the answers. You have to have it in your heart. And, your, and the biggest testimony that you have is you. How Jesus changed you. <laughs> how He brought you peace. How He gave you a hope. <clears throat> so Philip's heart and his desire, regardless of his circumstances, are to preach Jesus. And he's given more. Okay? Okay? Acts chapter 8, verse 26 through 40. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go south to the desert road that goes from down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official in charge of the entire treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. He had gone to Jerusalem to worship. On his return was sitting in his chariot reading Isaiah the prophet. The Spirit said to Philip, Go over to the chariot and say, stay by it. So Philip ran up and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading, Philip asked? Verse 31, How can I, he said, unless someone guides me? Philip, Peter guided Philip, who then Philip guided Peter, some himself, right? And now Philip is guiding this Ethiopian eunuch. And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of Scripture. This is all it took. He has led 
He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before the shearer is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation he was deprived of judge, judge, justice. Who can recount his descendants? For his life was removed from the earth. Who's that about? How much you've read in the Bible, not read in the Bible study every day? Who was that about? There you go. Childlike faith. That's about Jesus. And then the Holy Spirit gives you the words to say beyond there because the hope is in your heart. Tell me, said the eunuch, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with, with this very scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. He didn't have his Bible with him, didn't have any scriptures with him. He just heard this scripture and said, ah, that's about Jesus. I'm going to tell you about Jesus. As they traveled along the road and came to some water, the eunuch said, Look, here's water. What is there to prevent me from being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip, the, Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more. But went on his way rejoicing. But Philip appeared at Azotos and traveled through that region, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Okay, not to spend a lot of time on it. What happened here? Where was Philip when this started? Samaria. He was in a ground that had been so hard because it had been distracted by everything, but he went in and talked about Jesus and softened the soil, and there was some plants that came up and produced fruit. Simon might have been a weed, might not have been. We're worried about fruit production. Okay? And then Peter and John come in and see it to be genuine. And all their way home, they preach and sow seed. And there's plants coming up and fruit production. Makes sense to my way of thinking over here that I've got to repent of. I need to stay in Samaria. It's where I started. God wants me here. They, they, they need to hear the truth. There's many more towns. I'm in Samaria. But what happens? An angel of the Lord comes and visits. If you don't realize, this is the third time that an angel is mentioned in Acts. Number one is when Jesus says, Go, don't worry about the kingdom of Israel or the things that God has ordained and set by His time. You don't know them. You don't need to know them. You go and be my witnesses. Okay? And they're sitting here going, uh, Got the biggest job before us. He wants us to go sit and wait. When's he coming back? My thought process is still on the kingdom of Israel. And two angels show up and say, Go do what he told you. Jesus will return. He will harvest. You go what he told you to do in the meantime. Even though it doesn't make sense to go back and sit and wait, you got to because you can't do it without the power. You'll understand this later. So you go sit back and wait and pray and, and the power will come upon you. And then an angel comes in Acts chapter 5, if you remember, and the twelve are arrested and told, Do not preach anymore about this God named Jesus. And what happens? The angel comes in the middle of the night, takes them out miraculously. No one knows in the guard and everything what, what happened. And they go back to the same place they were preaching before where they got arrested. They were taken in the night sometime. You know you couldn't have slept after that. And early the next morning, they're back at the temple where they were arrested doing what? Preaching. They've, they let the fear subside. They let the logic subside. Because if I go right back and they've already warned me, I know I'm getting arrested then. And I get arrested. I don't even get a chance to preach the message, probably. And I get arrested and brought back, and I'm literally stripped of my skin. And then when I leave and told again not to preach about Jesus, I count it as joy because they're doing what Jesus has commissioned them to do. And now Philip has gone, and there's a, there's a crop growing in Samaria. It makes utter sense to stay there. But an angel says, no, go over here to this desert strip. Uh, what? How many times has the Holy Spirit nudged on you, and you're like, that don't make sense. Well, God's ways are not man's ways, are there? And His ways are so much higher than yours. And put your faith and trust in Him. So he goes and he, and he finds this Ethiopian eunuch who has this scripture and it's clearly about Jesus and he tells him about the joy that's in his heart. 
and he gets baptized. Where does that Ethiopian eunuch go? Back to his home? Philip took the gospel to Samaria, and then because of Philip, the Ethiopian eunuch took the gospel to the utter ends of the earth. We went from one of the twelve to a lay person in the church to a new convert. Don't tell me God isn't big enough to spread His gospel to the ends of the earth. And He wants to use each and every one of you. And that should be evident from the people that He used right here. And then Scripture, remember I told you those who put their heart focused and will be given more? Oh, what is there to say about Philip? I love Star Trek because they can beam themselves from one place to the other. Philip was beamed by God from this location to that location. Now, if that's not one of the woo moments in the Bible, and, and I'm so ready to read about Philip next, right? But then Acts chapter 9 is Saul persecuting the church. You don't have to know the rest of the story. You don't have to know about that person that you've sown that seed to. Yes, if that person comes back, then you need to disciple them, train them up, be by them, teach them, but you've got to be that way yourself or you're a hypocrite. But you don't have to know. You just have to plant the seeds and you have to make sure that in your life you're bearing fruit. Can you see that from this story? Spoiler alert, you will read about Philip again in Acts chapter 21 verse 8 where he's sitting down for dinner with a man named Paul. Wow! How big our God is. And your mission is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, body, strength. To be a fisher of men. To go and spread the gospel message. To train up disciples. To be united with your brothers and sisters. One body, one spirit, one Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Living for the kingdom of heaven until God sends Jesus back for the harvest. Father in heaven, may we be kingdom-oriented children. May we be a church that spreads the gospel message. Lord, we'll leave the harvest up to you. We'll leave everything else up to you. We'll leave, leave the conversion of ourselves for production up to you. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your word. Fill us with Jesus. Help us to fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. To not be deceived. To take out any distraction or sin that entangles us. So that we run this race with perseverance. For we thank you, Lord God, for the things that you have done. For the things that you will continue to do. For your love, your faithfulness, your mercy, and your grace that surpasses anything that we can understand. We thank you our Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.